Hi, it's Jan. Welcome to my vlog. Um, it's May 17th in the afternoon and I'm so excited today to be joined by Matt Salacuse. He's a professional photographer here in New York City and I was lucky enough to meet him because Beckham, my little boy, plays with his little boy, Charlie, who is four years old yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yesterday, four years old, and I got to have an amazing piece, a birthday cake <laughs> with him. But I have gotten to talk to Matthew while watching little boys charging around and screaming and having a good time together. And I found out that he was this wonderful t photographer and I went to his website, I guess you would call it. Um, what is that website? It's just my last name, Salacuse. Salacuse.com. And I suggest that you go there and look at everything that we're going to talk about today because he's really had an amazing career for such a young man. Uh, so let's talk. I just want to talk to him a couple of seconds about one thing I'm very curious about because I think anyone in the arts um, does not take that as a career unless they have somewhat of a calling. So what I'm asking you is, and he's going to tell us, is why photography? That's a good question. Um, why photography? Um, well, I wasn't too strong with book learning. <laughs> like I was, I'm actually rather dyslexic. So um, reading didn't come easy. Uh -huh. So I looked for something visual okay. to, to sink my teeth into. And like I got, you know, I pursued uh, photography because uh, every time I, when I would uh, try and excel in school, it was just a fail. <laughs> I would, but I would get through just by sheer charm. <laughs> Like, I would charm the teachers into being like, let's give them a C, let's keep them going. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I ended up in M NYU, um, and I was sort of lost, and then I found photography nice. at NYU. And uh, some of the teachers said, oh, you have an aptitude for this, and I was like, oh, great. great. Aptitude. Yeah. A great word. <laughs> yeah, so I ended up uh, sort of doing well in their photo department. Well, what's there? Uh, I mean, I can figure a couple of professors in my life who really sort of picked me up and sort of moved me forward in a direction in a, a career. Is there someone at NYU that, or was there someone at NYU who really you felt mm, gave you that real pat on the shoulder? Yeah, it was my photo two teacher. That's like the first photo class like you take, really. And her name was Elaine Mays, and she's an amazing photographer. She photographed, um, you know, in Haight Ashbury in the '60s. Oh wow! Yes, she was there for the Summer of Love, and has an amazing collection of photographs. Um, and she sort of like took me under her wing a little bit and showed me the value of documentary photography, and that's where I started. Nice, 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 nice. Now you've sort of moved on, and you'll see on his website, he's. Photog you know, photographs some amazing people of our time and of other times too. Uh, sport heroes, uh, musicians, and also Rachel Maddow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I photograph Rachel Maddow for Entertainment Weekly. Um, they have a section called Three Rounds With. Ah. And that's uh, where you basically just get drunk with the subject. <laughs> <laughs> and Maddow is sort of an expert drinker. She was bartending in yes, the photographs. Yes, yes. She's a, she, can, she can put back. And <laughs> she is really funny and really smart. And uh, she's a mixologist, too. She knows how to make drinks. Whoa. Yeah. Something I never did. And I was a bartender for a short time. Oh, really? Yes, on 48th Street and Where? 8th Avenue at an old dive bar called the Golden Oak. And also down in the village at Kelly's Village West. What was the clientele like? Ah. <sighs> Low, 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 um, low, low. Low stock. <laughs> it was a beer and shot bar, but a couple of times I tried to mix a couple of drinks, and it's a, it was a sad. More about that later. Mm -hmm. What did you bring today? Well, I brought a portfolio. I'll skip around. This is uh, my portfolio. I bring this to meetings to sort of get work. Ah. Yeah. Um. 
found hardcover. Whoa! Yeah. So let me see if I can find that Maddow picture for you straight off the bat. You already brought it up. Oh. That was a great picture. There she is. I don't know. Y'all can see that. We can put it up on camera so yeah. maybe Lori can when she, our editor goes to work. And it's got a deer's head out East Texas. Yeah. <laughs> this is in a bar here somewhere around 48th Street. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> They're, they they needed it to be local for her because I think she works right in that neighborhood, ah. like forty seventh and sixth area, ah. or where NBC is. So yeah, we picked a bar that was local this for her. This is an exceptional book. It's Thank so you. well bound and put together. Uh, no wonder you work a lot. You know, you're in demand because you have such wonderful presentation. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, oh, and Mr. De Niro. Yeah. Yay. There's some actors for you. Ah. It's uh, Chaz, Chadwick Bowman and Robert De Niro. Yay. Um, My idol. Them. Yeah, so. My idol. Uh, De Niro is sort of a tough customer to photograph. It's a great photograph. Yeah, well, he's like sort of, uh, you know, he's, he's lost a little of his like tough virility energy that uh -huh. you expect from De Niro. Yes. And he's sort of like. You know, slouchy, like kind of grandfatherly now. Well, I think he is a grandfather. Uh, probably because he's a grandfather now. <laughs> so, like every time I would, uh, you know, try and get in a groove with him photographically, he would just sort of get slouchy, slouchy, slouchy. Ah. I know, and I was just trying to pull something out of him, and I really couldn't get that thing. It's a great photograph. Oh, let me tell you how I got. How? Oh. So uh, every time I picked up the camera to like just start taking his pictures again, he would address the camera, ah. and he would say hello. Ah. And, oh, I'll do it again. Hello. <laughs> like that. I was like, that's strange. I have to take the pictures. And I would, you know, go back and look at them. And I put the camera back up and you go, hello. <laughs> it's just like a reset for him or something. <laughs> so then I would take a picture, give him some direction. He wouldn't really take it. And then um, get slouchy, slouchy, slouchy. <laughs> and then, like, it was the very last shot. I went like this. Hello. I <laughs> see <laughs> so you put the two right together. I did. And then you were like, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, <laughs> that's how I got my shot. You know what? Uh, he was on Colbert the other night, and I love Stephen Colbert, and he was talking about working with Marlon Brando, and he wanted so badly to do one of the later films that in Brando's career the with score. him. The score. The score. And they said, well, we've got him, but, you know, we don't know what you're going to get. And he said, that's fine. What yeah. you see is what you get. So that's what he was raised with, and he talked about, talked about his admiration of Brando. He said... Actors of my age, you know, revered Brando. So that's kind of where he's following in his footsteps. Didn't he sort of change the paradigm of acting in the fifties? Oh, def oh, Brando. Yeah, Brando. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, he was the method, right. and also extremely good looking. And yes. Very, very talented, and also was an actor's actor. He studied dance um, with, you know, Maria Sokoloff. I want to say, but. Um, he really trained and mm. worked very hard at his craft, but he was, you know, he is also a go-getter. He w talked himself into roles all over the place. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's talk some more about you. Enough Can about, I talk about Brando. Brando more? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so. I didn't know him, but I knew people who dated him. Really? Yeah. He was a hot date. He was Spill a real the tea. womanizer. He really? loved women. I saw this documentary with him, uh, probably in the mid 60s early 60s not even documentary it was just raw camera footage of him right and he's just uh picking up women on the street first of all <laughs> second, second of all uh speaking french fluently yeah very smart he's like doing an interview with a french reporter and just slips into french yeah yeah he was very smart very smart very smart a yeah. great you know he, he was one of the great artists of my time and of probably last what do you say, century? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much the young'uns are going to follow him today, but they will because of the Godfather will continue to be repeated over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I still think that death scene in the Godfather when he's out playing with his little grandson and yes. with the uh, spray can. Yeah, and the orange. Mm, and yeah. then he drops dead of a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. But even that scene, I mean, you know, he, he just, he lives it. Yeah. He lives it. Mm. Well, photography, so it was a bugaloo for me when I was an actress. I hated being photographed. I never thought I looked right, and I always got a little nervous, and they would always say to me, relax. 
relax. Well, you can't force someone to relax. I know. Yeah, it's like act natural. Like act what, natural. What's natural? What's you can't act natural. It's a oxymoron. You can't act. Yeah. Normal. So Be normal. how do you do it? I mean, you just keep working with them until they get. Well, if you have to easy. fool them, like I fooled De Niro into laughing, right. you fool them, or you know, you try and build some sort of rapport before the shoot, just like talking kindly with the person, getting on some common ground, and then uh, that trans hopefully translates when you're sitting in front of them, you know, in front of 50 PR people and trying to take a picture. But it's it's a it's a give and take. It's like a, a mini relationship. A mini relationship. Yeah. And also, it's when they take the pictures in theater, it's always after you've done two performances right. and then everybody's like, a photo shoot? No! But they have to. Yes. Because you gotta, you gotta do it for publicity. Yeah. But it's like the last thing in the world. But some actors just thrive on it and they want to be in front of that camera like nobody. Mm -hmm. Probably why I had a lesser than career. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was very... Um, when I started photographing actors, it was... Um, something I hadn't been used to. Like I said, normally, if I photo someone like Rachel Maddow who's not an actor, I would have to talk to her and coax her into doing something I wanted, like trying to uh, push my will upon her. She's trying to push her will upon me, and we're going to meet in the middle somewhere. Whereas actors, uh, I started photographing, you know, big Hollywood big actors. Big Hollywood actors. And they would say, just tell me what to do. Yeah. And they're like, oh, uh, be more uh, passionate in your eyes. And then they would do it. They would, uh, whatever. They can bring it. Whatever the direction is, they take it because that's what they do. They take direction. Right. So I didn't realize that until, like, you know, like my fourth or fifth, like, big actor. I was like, oh, I can just tell you what to do. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they have to bring it. Once the cameras are rolling, you have to bring it immediately. I, I was never great at that. I was always like, let me make my entrance. Right. You know? <laughs> And get into it. So, what do you, if you had some wisdom, mm -hmm. not that you're still a very young man, mm -hmm. according to me, um, t for someone who wanted to become a photographer, a professional pr photographer, what the heck would you say? I think things have changed since I came up when it was, I mean, I have to say, uh, there have been a few revolutions since I've been shooting. Uh, the main one is. Uh, from analog to digital so but that was just a technical thing you sort of had to get used to and and figure out you know how to navigate that but the, the w another one that's sort of technical is Instagram existing uh. and this is a little more tricky to navigate because anyone can be a photographer now uh. anyone can make a professional looking photograph now so what the barrier to entry uh -huh. used to be talent Ah, and money. You have to have a little money to go to the dark room every day and spend time, like right. You know, grinding. Um, but now the barrier barrier to entry is what everyone everyone can do it. Wow. I mean, this camera that we're shooting a professional <laughs> vlog on, <laughs> anyone can purchase it. It's true. It'd be an age. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's the barrier to be a photographer now? Well, dedication. Um, and, and composition, don't you think composition has a little something to do with it? You have to decide yes, but what's in the photograph. True, but with editing techniques and Photoshop, you can really cook anything. Wow. And especially, with, like, you, you cook it right on your phone on Instagram now with all the filters and, like, you know, changing shift, uh, the focus shifting. It's like the stuff that I spent years in college. <laughs> <laughs> trying to master is something you could just get on an app. Well, I kind of feel that way about music in a weird way because uh, the, the instrumentation has changed so much and you can voice something on a computer now that it would have taken uh, Bach years and years and years, but he did it because he was a genius, mm -hmm. you know, sort of instantly. So I know you took uh, Beckham's second year class photo. I did. It, it was a lot of fun. What was the biggest challenge there? <laughs> <laughs> um, the biggest, the biggest challenge of photographing a two and a half year old is like uh, just getting them to stand still because they they just want as soon as you sit them down they each go different directions. <laughs> um, so it was it was adorable. It was a challenge, <laughs> but we got it done. You got it done, and there's some cute cute photographs. I'm sure Lori will find one. Uh, my editor uh, that she could flash on the screen. 
But thank you so much I, I, for being here. I mean, is there anything else that you want to show us that you have a penchant for right this minute? Yes. <laughs> I have a penchant for uh, promotion. I'm known as like a excellent promoter. All right. So that might be my barrier to entry as a photographer is like, I do things a little more creatively than most people. Ah. Yeah, so I send these. This is like a promo I did in 20... 2015. Wow! Yes! So I, I went on tour with this this artist named King Cruel. He's sort of an English bluesy wow. folk singer. And then I um, I photographed him and oh gosh. Ah. Uh, Maybe we'll have to put this on. Yeah. <laughs> wow! And you have a whole out, a layout of yeah. photographs. This is incredible! Yeah. Incredible! Incredible. So this is the kind of dedication and work that it needs to be to catch someone's eye and to be a professional photographer. Mm. It's really, really, really amazing. Yeah. And I uh, promo. Oh my God. The year before that, the last year, 2017, I try to do one a year. Most photographers do they have two or three a year, but they're wow. kind of crappy and they're smaller postcards or. Just reminders that they exist to yes. send to the photo editors and the We used to archive. send out eight by tens. Yes, so it's similar to that. Yeah. Right? It's just a reminder I'm alive. You right, know? right, right, right. So I like to do one good one a year. Right. So I made this one. Oh it's a movie it's got poster. Zero and all the guys. Wow, that's fantastic. And Maddo and oh my and Rihanna god, Rihanna. And Broad City and um Yes. Andy Samberg. Andy and Samberg. Louis C.K. Louis C.K. It's before. Before. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to stop showing this yes. after. I was like, oh, God, thanks, Louis. Louis. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, and this, then this one I love. This is a little more simpler, but a little more creative. It's temporary tattoos of my <laughs> photo shoots. <laughs>